Yo, what is up, everybody, and welcome back to another NBA 2K14 My Career Game with the LA Lakers and Danny Tice, who's now wearing number 21. I don't even know how I ended up with this 21. I know 17 is taking because that's Andre Blotcher's number as seen there again. That school play up to go. But um, yeah, I'll take it. And this team, we were, I think we were 8 and 22 when I joined it. That was around December. Since then, I key gamed a lot of games because I was trying to get traded again. I ended up, you know, getting traded to the Lakers, however that works. And here's Danny Granger, by the way. I said Danny Granger, Danny Granger came back from injury, and um, there he is. He came back, and unfortunately, he's playing like he's still injured. Bricks two shots in a row. I give to Granger once again, lining up the three, and he misses that one too. Like, all right, Granger. He's playing the power forward spy space, facing the four well and stuff like that, but um, he's not making anything. There, he smartly passes it, and then look at the ball movement. The ball movement came just flying across. Usually, only the CPU does that, but our team just pulled that off masterfully there and ended up in a chase Buttinger 3, so that was cool to see. It doesn't happen too often, but when it does, it looks pretty damn sexy. But anyways, we're 8-22, and 22, so I key gamed a lot of games from the, um, December when I got to the team until February, as um, you see me trying to take a charge there. I'm like fed up with the CPU, man. I play way too much of these games. I'm just trying to get any wins possible, because as you can see, we're trying to scratch our way into the playoff picture now even though it shows us as about like the seventh or eighth seed there we're actually the fourth seed because we're the highest team in the pacific conference and they have the four seed like they designated to whoever's the highest seed in a conference if they're not any higher or something like that i don't know exactly how to explain it don't really care to explain it but i think you guys get the gist of it so we are the fourth seed right now and as you see the spurs are nine for nine but they don't even have the lead they're 9 for 9, they don't have to lead. They're cheesing us, but they don't even have to lead because we were knocking out a bunch of threes. And there's that charge cheese, man. You put them in the corner, you go for a charge, they gotta do like a spin move or something. You hit them with the charge. And <laughs> it works. I'll take it, man. I, I don't care at this point, alright? I'm gonna. That's what they're. The CPU is gonna be cheesing me. I'll get them right back, alright? It's only fair in my eyes. As you see, I tried to hit that same shot I hit near the end of the first quarter. Even though it was an excellent A, I couldn't knock it down. And Foy's half court heave does not go. And we go into the half up eight on the Spurs. This is a pretty big game because the Spurs are a good team this year. Even though Tim Duncan, as you can see, is not on the um, court, but he is injured. Um. Spurs are still doing well, so we want to try to beat them. They have Big Al on their team. Tony Parker's still around. Manu was on, like, the Pelicans, but <laughs> I don't know how to let that happen. But the Spurs are still really good. They got Kawhi Leonard, who's now, you know, I think his rating has to be pretty high since he has the Superstar logo. So the Spurs definitely got, you know, talent on their team. And plus they have Zach Randolph, I think, coming off the bench. So, you know, the Spurs are definitely good, all right? And we're going to try to beat them. But the best player on the team is apparently Randy Foy. I know you guys remember that seven-game series from last season. But, oh, God, Randy Foy, which is going off. All right, that was two seasons ago, actually. Because that was when we were in the Western Conference. But, um, yeah, so we were 8-22. and Then we went to February. And our record still wasn't that good. But we had gotten a few games more over, like, near 500 than before. And then once, you know, the trade deadline passed and I was stuck on the Lakers, I stuck with them, played most of these games, and I won we won pretty much all of them. We only lost, like, one game to the 76ers because Nerlin Noel was going, like, 13 for 13 on the field. It was pretty dumb. But, um, otherwise, we've been doing pretty well. And also, if you're probably noticing, I shortened the quarter lanes to six minutes because I'm trying to fly through the regular season as quickly as possible. And six-minute quarters allows that. I just want to get into the playoffs, and that's my plan. I want to get to the playoffs. We're a few games away from that right now. I think as of this game with the Spurs, we would be about 15 games away from getting into the playoffs. So, I'm trying to do that. I want to get you guys Season 3 playoffs, and then we move on to 2K15. Season 3 playoffs, retire 2K15. That's the plan. Now, whether it's actually going to happen, I don't know, because I want to try to do all of this before Madden 15 comes out, because once Madden 15 comes out, I probably won't be playing 2K at all. So, if I could stash up these gameplays and um get get them going then we'll be good we'll see how it goes though we'll see how the next week or so goes how much time i could put into 2k15 i'm gonna try to grind this game out man since i won't be playing man in 25 much but um hopefully we can get it done all right so that's the plan i'm just letting you guys know that insight anyways into the fourth quarter of this game all of a sudden the spurs are up three randy foy still playing like a god um team's a little bit off right now no one's really making the shots thankfully Kawhi leonard misses the bunny it looked like it was going in but it rattles back out so i'm like you know what if nobody's knocking down their shots i'm gonna have to put the team on my back and knock down that three the corner three goes for tyson we tie the game back up but here comes randy foy lining up the three and it's a three-point shootout right now randy foy 
versus Denny Tice. I'm like, all right, I'm going to get him right back. But unfortunately, the corner three is not open. Thankfully, Danny Granger is, and Granger, despite being tired, finally knocked down the shot, and we tied the game up again. And then Randy Ford's like, I got you guys. But he can't knock down the shot, but unfortunately, that dude comes up with the offensive rebound and the putback, so... And three point shootouts over, but they still got two points out of it. And then he ties trying to get the and one, but we do draw the foul on Parker there. Sends it to the line, and Tice knocked down both free throws as Denny pokes the ball loose from Randy Foy going into the corner, pulling up the three. For the lead, Denny Tice is good as cold, knocking that one down. Two and a half minutes left. They try to get the three right back, but unfortunately, they get the offensive rebound. But there's Danny Granger with the big time rejection. And once again, Denny Tice in the corner, pump faking, driving it to the rim on Parker and getting it to go. Denny Tice with the beautiful pump fake. You know they were anticipating it. And Randy Foy right back. Are you kidding me? It's a three-point shootout right now, man. We'll see who comes up with one next. It's Al Jefferson. Look at Big Al hitting the spin move there. Making it a two-point game with a minute ten left. Denny Tice driving to the rim. Kicking it out. Trying not to get blocked. And DJ Augustine rewards my trust in him. Knocking down the shot. I don't know why he's in the game instead of Collison. But he knocked down the shot. So it's all good. And here, 33 seconds left. Look at my trust in Andre Botch. I told you he's a beast. And look at him playing like a beast. Giving us the two-possession lead. And now Tony Parker going to the jump shot there. But it's a two-point jump shot, so I'm okay with it. I let I was anticipating him pulling up for a three, but if he wants to get the two, that's fine because now with 22.7 seconds left, they got a foul. But I missed the first free throw. It's still a two-possession game, but not hitting that first free throw definitely hurts us. We got to at least knock down the second one, which we do despite that B-plus release, which is pretty bad considering I have like a 90 free throw. And Danny Tice trying to make up for it on defense, getting the block there on that Patterson dude. And look at me, just hounding Parker. You're not taking the three. You're not taking the three. Stay in the two-point line. You're just not taking the three. But Randy Foy is and you know randy foy's got to go because he's randy foy the god so it's a two-point game and now denny ties going to the free throw line again fouling out tony parker in the process but we gotta knock down both of these two free throws it's very crucial for us to get both of them to make it a two-possession game once again the first one up the first one down so now you know take a deep breath calm down don't worry about the crowd and it's good I think sometimes shooting free throws at home is probably harder than on the road because you got the home crowd, they're silent, it's just like silent, everybody's anticipating, on the road everybody's loud, but um, we knocked down those two free throws, it's all good, um, Andre Bosch goes to the line one more time, Corey Joseph misses a full court heave, and we come through with the victory on the Spurs, and we move one game closer to trying to make the playoffs, now making the playoffs is still going to be hard, there's a lot of people on the way, but we'll see how it goes, we'll see how it goes next time, where I'll catch you guys for some more NBA 2K14, hope you guys leave a like in the video if you enjoyed it, and subscribe for more.